The purpose in this information is to open eyes and to sharpen discernment in today's end times, particularly in view of the crucial presidential election on November 6, 2012, about 12 days away. Although Romney is the qualified and wiser choice for America as president, a Romney presidency does not match the spirit of Antichrist anywhere near the magnitude of Obama's match to the spirit of Antichrist. The following points are a handful of reasons why an Obama re-election precisely matches the spirit of Antichrist in the world today. None of these points are small issues but are huge issues from God's perspective and highly significant in relation to America's future. Firstly, Obama, like most all world leaders today, favors a one world government modeled after Western Europe. The one world government concept itself is a major Bible prophecy and nearing fulfillment globally in this generation, with Antichrist eventually at its head. Obama has strong belief in a government which oppresses and dominates its people, which he has already proven here in the United States, even in his pushing of Obamacare. In fact, Obama's big government mindset clearly plays right into the coming one world government mindset and the spirit of Antichrist. In contrast, Romney's clear view is that America pull away from Europe's current Antichrist model. A second example of the spirit of Antichrist in Obama is his clear pattern of deceit and continued lying to the American people for four years as president. This is the spirit of deception which is without question inherent to the spirit of Antichrist. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 10 states that Antichrist himself, being the papacy of Rome, will come with a nature filled with, quote, all the deception, end quote, possible in one person. In fact, an Obama second term as president matches perfectly today's world leaders as a whole who themselves are under the spirit of Antichrist and deceitfulness, which is foretold for today's end times. Conversely, Romney as president comes nowhere close to the outrageous deceptions continually flowing from President Obama and which match the spirit of Antichrist. A third tangible example is Obama's proven disrespect and disfavor for the end time Jews of Israel and Prime Minister Netanyahu. Without question, this places Obama in the spirit of Antichrist in today's end times. In fact, numerous Bible passages like Genesis chapter 12 verse 3 show a standing promise by God through Abraham that any person who curses or even stands against the Jews of Israel immediately places himself in position to receive God's wrath and curses and even potentially bring God's wrath down upon the nation which that particular leader oversees. Obama's disrespect for Israel is a huge error and also lines up with today's global leaders as a whole and is definitely in the spirit of Antichrist. Romney, however, is the opposite of Obama and shows great respect for Prime Minister Netanyahu and Israel as our number one friends in the world today, as it rightly should be. A fourth example deals with the fact that Obama has almost gutted the United States military in his, four, in his first four years. This not only diminishes the United States' ability to defend ourselves, but also diminishes our ability to help Israel militarily. This again shows Obama's mindset is in the spirit of Antichrist by being unwilling to keep Israel's best interests as our priority even turning his back on Israel militarily. This lines up exactly with Zechariah chapter 12 verse 3, which foretells of all end time nations being against Jerusalem, which is most definitely the spirit of Antichrist and the proven attitude of Obama. On the other hand, Romney would build the United States military and help Israel. 
A fifth example shows the spirit of Antichrist at work in Obama by his stance in favor of a divided Jerusalem, also called the two-state solution. This would allow the Muslim world, like the Palestinians in Gaza, to have Jerusalem as its capital simul simultaneously with the Jews of Israel. Although God's Bible promise to Israel calls for Jerusalem to belong to Israel alone and not be divided, most all world leaders today, including Obama and Benedict XVI, are collectively in the spirit of Antichrist by their relentless efforts to force Israel to accept a divided Jerusalem, which Revelation shows is inevitable at the hands of Antichrist, again being the papacy of Rome. A sixth geopolitical example deals with the Red Horse of Revelation chapter 6 verse 4, which symbolizes the global bloodshed which will occur just after the coming seven-year tribulation starts. This coming great bloodshed greatly includes the Islamist terrorists themselves globally, since Revelation 6.4 states, quote, A great sword was given to him, meaning the red horse, that men should slay one another, end quote. Amazingly, Obama is helping to spring load the foretold red horse of revelation. He's doing this by befriending radical Islamists, helping them financially, favoring the Muslim Brotherhood. Obama was passive and, and turned the other way when Libya terrorists murdered our own ambassador and three other Americans. He has bowed to the Saudi king, and as I mentioned before, Obama clearly favors the Muslim Palestinians over the Jews of Israel. It's as obvious as can be that Obama sides with the world's most extreme evildoers and haters of people and haters of Israel. All of this shows him clearly to be in an evil mindset and in the spirit of Antichrist. Romney as president would have none of this. But in summary, these previous six points are just some of the geopolitical actions of Obama, which are 100% proof of Obama matching the spirit of Antichrist. And unlike Romney, Obama's politics are in the same evil mindset as today's collective world leaders in today's end times. In closing, I'll mention uh, just three personal t characteristics of Obama which show that he's also in the spirit of Antichrist in his own personal actions and personal beliefs. For example, Obama favors uh, and supports homosexuality and same-sex marriages. This is most definitely a belief which opposes God and God's word and places Obama in the spirit of Antichrist. A second known fact about Obama's personal beliefs is that he favors abortion and even partial birth abortions. These are vicious, murderous attacks on innocent babies and a total abomination before God. Here again, Obama's beliefs are in the spirit of Antichrist. The Bible is clear in Psalms chapter 139, which proves that human life starts at the point of conception and that God himself forms every baby in the womb. Obama's support for wholesale abortion opposes the Bible, which again shows Obama in the spirit of Antichrist. A third example is Obama's personal claim to be a Christian. However, he clearly fails the Bible criteria of what a true born-again spirit-filled follower of Christ really is. But the personal factor which puts Obama in the spirit of Antichrist is not just his unchristlike beliefs and actions which oppose God's word, but is his arrogant and unrepentant attitude while still holding himself up deceptively as a Christian. This brings a mockery and a reproach upon the Lord. This is the trickiest and most deceptive profile in the spirit of Antichrist for people to discern, namely, when a person claims to be Christian, yet his own character and conduct don't follow the Bible. 1 John chapter 2 verse 4 states this, saying, quote, The one who says, I have come to know Jesus, yet does not keep his word, is a liar, 
and the truth is not in him. 1 John chapter 2, verse 4. This includes Obama. It includes the papacy of Rome and includes any person who claims to be Christian but does not follow the Bible and worse, exhibits a defiant and unrepentant attitude. In fact, James chapter 2, verse 19 states that, quote, even the demons believe. The Lord Jesus himself repeatedly stressed obedience to his word, like in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, verse 46, saying, Why do you call me Lord, but you don't do what I say? In other words, mere lip service to God without adhering to his word fails true Christ-likeness and lines up with the spirit of Antichrist, no matter how emphatically that person proclaims himself to be Christian. But all of what I've presented here regarding Obama and the nearing November 6th presidential election can be crystallized by saying that the largeness of the spirit of Antichrist operating in Obama and in his, in his politics is tangibly evident and a re-elected Obama to a second term means the spirit of Antichrist would start becoming unleashed in America.